after I complain, I will say something I am thankful for. <laughs> the reason I'm laughing is because the second I started that, the first thing I noticed fast was that I complained so much more than I realized. So much more. And this is from someone, I mean, I, I just told you, I put it out there. Like I've spent 10 years doing this in my journal. And so I think of myself as a pretty positive person. As, as, as fairly optimistic, maybe even really optimistic, but I still found that in my actual experience of life, I would just complain, well, that meeting took longer than I thought, or yeah, this thing, that was weird. And, and, and this is how I'm expressing myself to people. I walk into the room, I catch the children doing something wrong. Uh, you know, I'm looking for the wrong, apparently. And so as soon as you say, okay, catch yourself, complain about something, fine, but then you have to say something you're thankful for. So you bring the ratio at least to 50-50 instant reaction you can see it lighten up other people's moods hello everyone welcome to better together i am not maria nor am i kevin i am kelsey and this is winnie <laughs> and i am going to try and produce this show intro hold winnie and fade this music all in one false swoop so bear with me here thank you guys so much for being here and I'm really excited for you to listen to part two of our amazing, amazing interview with Greg McEwen. He is just full of life tips, lessons, hacks. I mean, part one was incredible and part two just continues on, continues on being incredible. So I can't wait. Let's get to it. The beginning, lots of people want to write a book. The question is, is can you work on it every day consistently? Well, one way to do that more consistently is to make it more enjoyable, to make it easier. Another way to make it easier is to, is to set a pace that's effortless. Uh, so I mentioned that already for me with writing it's two pages a day, two average pages a day. You don't have to do more than that. Anyone who writes two average pages a day consistently can end up writing anything they want. Anything's open to them. They can write books, no problem. It's actually extremely fast writing is two average pages a day. But what people have in their minds is that they think, oh my goodness, if I've got to write the big novel, if I've got to write the, uh, the book, uh, you know, the bestseller, they think, oh, I've got to write in it. I've got to 12 hours a day and it, it, that's impossible. And it's overwhelmed before they start it. Maybe they did it one day, 12 hours, they do, well, they can't sustain it day two. So they're out before they've barely begun. So what I've found helpful now, what the goal is, is to have not just a lower bound, right? Like for me, maybe it's like you open the document and write a hundred words. Maybe that's the lower bound, but the higher bound, it, having an upper bound is more counterintuitive. So like on a good day, you feel like, wow, I could write 10 pages. No, but you don't. That's the whole thing. And so you have an upper bound that you restrain yourself and you say, well, I'm not going to do it just because I can. And that means that you maintain your health and your appetite for day two. Maybe day two, you jump feeling into it as much, but you go, well, but it's only, eh, it's just, I gotta do, I'm gonna do two pages. Uh, and, you know, I'm not gonna do more than that when I get to, I'm done. And with writing, and, could it be, could you all, instead of doing pages, because let's say you're doing the screenplay, let's say you're doing sure. your journal, could you yep. say, I'm gonna do two hours? Because I think early in the conversation you said. Yeah. Exactly. So, so you can, there's, you can do about, you can do it number of words, you can do number of pages, you could be time allotment. Uh, journal specifically, I have a little experience with that. Uh, you know, 10 plus years ago, I just decided, okay, I want to write a journal every day. I'd written it intermittently, effectively my whole life. And I, I just don't want to miss a day anymore. I just want to get to the point where I just never miss. And so I said, okay, lower bound, one sentence. Never more than one sentence. Never less than one sentence, excuse me. Uh, never more than five sentences. Now that's the key. That's the big breakthrough, is that the temptation when people start writing their journals, they, they just write two, three pages, it takes them an hour, it takes them two hours, it's a veritable essay. Well, day two, even literally day two, they're like, I'm out. It's just too much. Day three, they're going to make up for day two. It's like they, they feel bad, a little discouraged with it. No more than five sentences a day. No matter how late it is, you just you write one sentence, no more than five, until this thing is just fluid, until you never miss. And it's been... I'm pretty sure that I have not missed a day now in 10 years. Uh, how, and and that, that's the advantage. How, that's is that, it. how has that paid off for you with the journal? Oh, you know, it's still, it's still like, 
that's a great question. Let me try and think of one good answer for that. Um, here's one way in which it's invaluable. Uh, I mean, it, it's good for me in the moment. I love doing it. It's a good mm -hmm. mental health thing for me. Just right. reflect on the day. What am I grateful for? It's good in that, right? But the consistency, it allows me once a week to review. I didn't do it this week. I've, got, I've left space in, the, in, in my journal to do it because I love it so much. Just to look through a whole week and say, well, of everything that's gone in the last week, what are the major things? Because I find that to be, again, restorative. I find it perspective giving, but I also find it strategically helpful because then I know which things to build upon for the next seven days. But take that to the next level. Every six months, uh, there's a general conference uh, in the church that I attend, and it's a big annual conference. They do two, it's two days. I already do it every six months. Uh, watch it online. And now I use those two days while I'm getting what I feel just fed you know, great content and ideas and challenging perspectives on how to be a better person, a better dad, a better husband, a better human, a, a greater contributor. I review the whole six months. And what I'm doing, and, and maybe this doesn't sound profound to anybody else, but I'd never been taught how to do strategic planning like this. I'm looking for the major wins that I'm most grateful for over a six month period. So that's the first thing. That's tons of fun to do that because you just feeling good. Mm -hmm. You just get to see and win and be grateful over a longer period of time. Number two is I'm saying, okay, given those items, what are the next things building on them that I want to do? So these, when you identify things you're grateful for over a long period of time, it's informative in a couple of ways. It informs you that this matters to you, that you're already prioritizing without really thinking about prioritization, but you're also tapping into what already has momentum. These things are working. So how can you build on them now and, and you, it's like, I've, I've called it just recently, given it a name, it's like positive prioritization. Because you're looking at what's working over a long period of time and you're setting goals for the next six months. I, I have found this to be definitely like really for real game changer. And, and so what I'm doing for those, in, 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 over those two days is I am looking through, for me, I get through about two journals every, every six months now. So go through one of a quarter approximately. And so I'm reviewing two books worth and just looking and catching the most important things. I'm, I'm amazed at my forgetfulness. There'll be amazing things sometimes that have happened that I can't even remember until I'm rereading. And, and then I'm, it, it helps you to see the news of your life instead of just being reactive and going through and, it. And so you're writing about, I mean, things that bothered you in the past or just kind of in the moment? How I? You mean in the six-month review? or In you your journal, day? in that journal, yeah. Every day, is that yeah, what you're asking? Every day, yes. Every day, every, every day, my every single entry I write begins with "I am thankful for," and and I have learned that I need to write "I am thankful for" even things that I that seem negative to me. This is a newer thing for me. I've not done a lot of this, but I'll say I am thankful that this frustrating thing happened. And as I write that, I don't know why I'm grateful. <laughs> it's like an act of little act of faith. By the end of the sentence, you hope that there'll be something there. And you find I find that there is. I find that something will come to me. I'll be like, yeah, I'm thankful because I can make this adjustment. I'm thankful because I, you know, uh, I've, I've discovered this thing I need to change. I, that something will be there. And and this is this is a this is a big part of the second path that we started talking about earlier on. Is it's not enough to be thankful for the good things. That's a good idea. We should be thankful for the good things. But that's like leaving half of the advantage on the table. It's like taking, it's like somebody offering a million dollars and we just take half a million. It's there for the taking. To be thankful for the, the rough stuff, the hard stuff, the stuff that we wouldn't have chosen ourselves opens those up as well to advantage and so the key uh, there's a there's a scripture about this that i, I love it says it says um about, well thou shalt thank the lord thy god in all things <laughs> not in the good things in all things and what i have found is that there's the advantage to that is that it it just it 
it speeds up the process of turning a negative into a positive. And a person who can turn a negative into a positive can never be defeated. <laughs> so it's the most, it's the fastest way to switch it. Here's another thing that I, I, I've learned about this subject is if I can link not just thankfulness in a journal once a day or once a week or once every six months in the way I've just been describing that those are like key specific routine uh, installations of thankfulness. And I, and I obviously advocate that would have found them useful, but that doesn't address this other really considerable part of life, which is the ongoing experience of life. You know, the journal is like once a day, it's not in the midst of life. And so I learned this new, habit uh this formula which is this after i complain i will say something i am thankful for <laughs> the reason i'm laughing is because the second i started that the first thing i noticed fast was that i complained so much more than i realized so much more and this is from someone i mean i, I just told you i put it out there like i've spent 10 years doing this in my journal and so i think of myself as a pretty positive person as, as, as a fairly optimistic, maybe even really optimistic, but I still found that in my actual experience of life, I would just complain, well, that meeting took longer than I thought. So yeah, this thing, that was weird. And, and, and this is how I'm expressing myself to people. I walk into the room, I catch the children doing something wrong. Uh, you know, I'm looking for the wrong, apparently. And so as soon as you say, okay, catch yourself, complain about something, fine, but then you have to say something you're thankful for. So you bring the ratio at least to 50-50 instant reaction you can see it lighten up other people's moods we introduced it to our children my son i remember one time i said i said he said complained about something i said okay give me something you're thankful for i'm so glad that my dad wants me to play that game where i have to say i'm thankful for something oh. after i complain right and it didn't matter because gratitude and thankfulness is that dynamic that causative that transformative we all laughed <laughs> And it still brought the feeling up. It still changed the state. Right. And that is what I have found. And we just do this. We do this like perpetually. Uh, and we learned this. This to me is a gift, I tell you, honestly. Uh, I, I think if, if somebody can totally transform their life through these, what we're talking about right now. Yeah. And I think it makes you more effortless. It does. When you do this. Because it, it does. you just, like you said, you just got lighter from saying. You get lighter. Right. Everyone laughed and it's like, okay, now. I'm breathing. I'm like now I, we're already back. Yeah, we're back. We're we're already back in a in an effortless state. You can't be in a state of suffering and gratitude at the same time. You can't be in a state of fear and frustration and gratitude at the same time. They could they do not coexist. The, one of the great little pieces of research I came across in, in, in writing effortless is that we you can measure now according to neurologists and uh, in psychologists, you can, they've done a lot of studies on this. They can measure the period of now. So now really? we tend to think about now as a very philosophical idea. Well, yes, we all know we live in the now, if you think about it and talk about it, but now is between two and three seconds. And the reason that we don't quite experience it that way is because our brain forms a bit of a trick where it links together these two to three second increments in a sense of time moving forward. But actually now it's two to three seconds. So that has so much advantage to us. When we talk about the heavier and lighter path, all we're really talking about is the next two to three seconds. Can you, can you, the next time that you start feeling frustrated with somebody, just two to three seconds, just get over it. Like, look, I'm sorry. It's on me. I apologize. Two to three seconds, just the instant now, choose the lighter path. I apologize. Please forgive me. I love you. Let's start over. Uh, I mean, yeah. easier said than done, but if you can do it, amazing. I, well, it, it, it but yes. you can form a habit. I think you can form a habit. Like you said, I'm going to complain. Now I'm going to be grateful. And at first it's like, wait, what? I complained so much, but then <laughs> it probably started becoming a bit of a habit to be more, more grateful and complain less. Yes, and I, and I think that this is the, just to connect the dots here. Well, actually, I think I need to sort of share a little backstory here because I learned the, the effortless way, to give it that term, in the midst of what at least should have been 
the greatest agonizing period of suffering in my life. And this is when we'd moved as a family to a new area. Um, it's a really uh, idyllic place, actually. Uh, it's out in nature. It's north of Malibu. It's this, uh, you, you know, it's like built in the 1950s. It's white picket fences, more horseways than roads. Uh, you know, lovely. And our children are thriving. Four children, as I mentioned. Uh, they're, they're just out, you know, they're on horses, the playing tennis, the, 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 the playing in the yard, I mean, they're just playing with our dog. I mean, everything's just like, it's good. And our, one of our daughters, Eve, uh, especially seemed to thrive. She is, she's literally just always running barefoot. She's out naming our chickens. She's climbing trees relentlessly. She's on the rock climbing team. Uh, she's physically um, dynamic. She's, she's reading constantly, writing journals every single night this is this is eve until she turns 14 i mean she just starts to slow down at first but i don't think much of it takes longer to do her chores um she's um uh, yeah she's answering us in sort of one word sentences oh boy uh, she's uh she's you know i mean i don't feel a little physically awkward but we're just like pretty age appropriate so we don't think much of it but then we go to a routine physical therapist appointment and she fails a reflex test, which again, we might not have even noticed or thought anything of it, but the, ther the physical therapist took Anna aside and said, look, you know, that really shouldn't happen. Um, have her, uh, you know, I think you should go see a neurologist. And, and with his perspective, we suddenly saw it all differently. We started thinking, okay, well maybe something severe is going on. And it, in fact it was. So we got, the opportunity to watch um, her in a free fall capability. Just like a picture of health over a three month, four month period, every day you could visibly watch her capability decline. So to the point that it took her literally think of this two full minutes to write her own name, uh, 45 seconds to write the last three letters of her name. I mean, I watched that, timed it, videoed it. Uh, she's taking hours to eat a meal. Um, the neurologist cannot give us even the beginning of a diagnosis. And that was the time right in the midst of that when we felt this two parts. That, that's where that came from. That's, what, that's why I couldn't believe Chris Williams talking about it. The same phrase. It, there was like two parts. We realized if we took the heavier part, if we complained all the time, if we allowed the things we couldn't control to consumers, if we took every piece of bait that was offered to us from well-intended people that would send us this, uh, you know, well, maybe she has this disease or that problem, and, you know, and these awful diagnoses, not from doctors, but from just well-intended people. If you take that path down, like if we, we realized we, there were paths and things that we would not do that we could not do because that's going to burn us out and it's so essential we cannot ever be burned out we have no idea how long the journey is going to be we have no idea what the ups and downs it's incredibly uncertain but incredibly important when you have something that important you can't pour on all the fuel in the first moment you've got to keep the, the fires burning indefinite period of time the lighter path became like this, that, no, it's not a lazy path, of course. It's a lighter path, an easier path. Well, we're going to be grateful for anything. That's where that culture began. That's what started it. And we just got to watch that it created all this almost magic, I would say. Like it, it led us to sort of singing around the piano at night. It led us to playing together and laughing together and, and, and keeping in that state of optimism and positivity. I, I read, I felt a little prompting to to read an article by Gordon B. Hinckley, uh, president of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints from a year, few years ago, for a particular article about cultivating an attitude of optimism and happiness. And I felt prompted to read that every single day. Think of that. Such an odd thing to feel like you should do in the midst of this catastrophic situation. But as I listened to that every day, it was like my brain was being rewired. Instead of taking the heavier path, I just could see a sense of hope when there's no evidence to support it, but if, 
no, no seen evidence, let's say. Uh, and that's what that helped to bring about this positivity, this 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 change, this improvement. I didn't have words for it at the time, but there is a theory from Barbara Fredrickson called the broaden and build theory that shows that if you can get into the state, it transforms your relationships, your activities, your discernment, and it helps you to actually get the results that you're trying to achieve. Uh, I, I I didn't have any language like that at the time, but I could have I I saw it, I experienced it. And so it helped us to discern the right things to do, and it helped us to be able to not know what not to do. And so here we are, this is uh, two and a half years later now, there've been ups and downs in the multiple treatment cycles. As of this conversation, she's, she's really, I would say, back physically, psychologically, mentally. She graduated high school early, in fact, uh, doing community college and doing you know, performing really well. So right as of now, but even now we don't know what the future is. So you still want to be in the peak optimal state so you can take the right action. And yeah, what's forward. the lighter path? I literally just was at a lunch with somebody and the young woman, yeah, I don't even know how it came up, said I have lung cancer <laughs> and never smoked and um, one of these super athlete types. Right. And I had not obviously met you yet. We had not you know, gone over your book. But my instinct said to me that she was working too hard, not just in life. I could tell she was like the super mom, the super earner, but she's one of those super doers that attacks, even that word, attacks every problem. Yeah. Like I'm going to kick my its ass. I'm going to kick cancer's ass. And so I still run five miles a day and I'm da, da, da. And I just said, Okay, I'm just going to offer this to you for my my sense is you are working too hard. And I get that there's, you know, you want to fight this thing, but I've seen people who almost fight too hard and they they fail because of that and now hearing from you, your story, your daughter, but then also this book, you know, I just said I think you need to take a pause and um, get to nature, breathe, uh, you know, find out where the emotional pains are coming from that are leading to this. But, but the bottom line is, I think she was going at it like, I'm going to work harder. I'm going to kick cancer's ass. And, and, and you know, your daughter was, thank God, young enough where you guys could be in control of that. But she sounds she sound like a super overachiever. Look at she graduated early. She could easily go down that path of, I'm going to continue to do X, Y, and Z. I'm not going to let this get in my way. And, you know, and I think that a lighter path is was clearly the way. And I think for this lady I talked to today, and thank you for this interview, in which she's going to follow up with me, and I'm going to make sure she gets your book. She needs a lighter path. Right. It, 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 it's, you know, it, to me, it's really important because we're not talking about a lazy path. No. We're talking about an optimal path. This is, this is actually what peak performance looks like. It doesn't look like the 80s motivational speaker said it looked like. <laughs> it doesn't look like just if you do everything and try it all and you do it all, you're going to have it all, you're going to get it all, you're going to go all the way. Like it's none of that is actually right. That isn't, that isn't right. When you see people advocating for that, if you look a little deeper, you'll find that they are, that there are, tremendous unintended costs that might not be obvious. Maybe it's the workforce is just getting burned out. They're propped up by all these bodies all over the place. Maybe it's by broken families, broken marriages. You know, like there is cost somewhere because it's kind of like they're, they're pretending that this approach works. Uh, you know, they're, they're, they're sort of, it's, 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 it's a, but it's a bill of goods. Yeah. been conned into thinking this works. It yes. is not how humans thrive. No, and you know what? It, it, it let's let's at least be fair for some of them who are being honest. It works in the short run, because I know a lot of these uh, people that are, you know, sell a lot of books based on that 20th century principle: no pain, no gain. Work hard, kick ass. I will tell you that off camera, their bodies are falling apart physically, and. Um, uh, yeah, I see. I don't know anyone who is working around the clock in that and subscribing to that. They may be succeeding financially, 
but I know physically and emotionally, I know a lot of them are heavily medicating. Others are, like I said, very ill and kind of scotch taped together when they put themselves out there. And I think um, it's good for us to be kind of educate people on that because um, I still see people trying to do it. And I say, no, 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 no. No, Maria, my wife has a brain tumor because of it. Mm. You know, we look back now and thank goodness for video and for, you know, being filmed and all that stuff because we wouldn't even remember. Like you, like you said, you wrote in your journal so you can look back in your journal because you wouldn't remember that stuff. I, we wouldn't remember half of our experience because we were just too busy working hard and chasing the next work and got to work harder and harder and harder. And yeah, I missed a lot. And I compromised our health because of it. And, you know, thanks to the show and people like you, it's like, hey, no, I think there's a pause. And I, I like that. I like the, it's not the lazy path. It's the optimal path. Um, we've taken up a lot of your time. It's a couple more things I'm going to ask. And then I, I tell you guys to really get the, some of the specific techniques on how you can become effortless. You got to pick up the book, um, you know, because we literally, this would be a 20 hour conversation, <laughs> um, but the book will have the practical steps, but there's just a couple of key things though, that I would love to finish off on. And um, this one, I love the courage to be rubbish. Yeah. Can you explain yeah. that? Yeah, the courage to be rubbish. This is for real. You want to make a lot more progress on what matters. You've got to give up the perfectionism. Uh, you, especially in the stuff that like isn't even visible. Yeah. So let's. Uh, well, I'll use an example from my own life because this was quite uncomfortable for me. Uh, I started the podcast to mention that to you. Yeah. Uh, and this was in the midst of the pandemic. I don't know anything about podcasting. I feel like it's time to do it. The opportunity is to do it. Well, it was in process right before the pandemic. Like it's with a production company. It's a great location. We actually, Jimmy Kimmel had selected the location because he's in partnership with Wheelhouse, who produces my podcast. Oh, and yeah. Shower, I, know, I know those guys. Yeah. Okay. They, great. There's a shower in their wheelhouse uh, house you know, down in LA. Yeah, he said, "Oh, this should be where the podcast is." So we were gonna, we were like, "Yeah, we should get Jimmy. He'll be the first." You episode know what? It's here. so funny because when I met with them, they were talking about this. We're this, just thinking about using the shower to podcast. And so, exactly. Okay. And so I was, I was so to be funny. their first podcast in the shower. The whole thing. Then the, then the pandemic happens. So now we're like, I mean, you couldn't even buy recording equipment at the beginning of the pandemic. You, yeah. there, was no, there was nowhere to get it. You couldn't get right. it online. Everyone was buying stuff up. There was no, you know, you couldn't get And so we're using this old microphone. I don't know what I'm doing. I really felt hugely out of my element uh, because it's a new thing. And, and just because, oh, well, you've done speaking or you've done writing, that doesn't mean you're good at this. Podcasting is its own thing. Of course. Interviewing is its own thing, its own art, its own craft. And so, but we, I had to make a decision. Do I want to be a perfectionist about this? Or am I going to have the courage to be rubbish? Just start. Yeah, it's like the shift between am I going to learn to do, sometimes means you're never going to do, or are you going to do to learn? And and the discomfort for me is I like to do stuff excellently. I like to do stuff as, as, as well as I can. I'm a, I'm a believer in that. But if I had taken that approach in this endeavor, mm -hmm. we would not have begun. And in fact, it's funny because it's sort of a, there's a comparative point where a friend of mine bought equipment the same week that I was going to launch. And they were same idea. Let's do a podcast. They're going to do a podcast. I'm going to do a podcast. And they never started. So they got the equipment. They got it done. And I don't know exactly why, but I think it's probably is because they wanted to do it so well or mm -hmm. something got in the way of taking action, the courage to be rubbish. And I, I have done this now for several months, um, not quite a year. The... For that whole time, I have had a slight feeling of failing, a slight feeling of like, oh, you know, I just wish, wish this was better. I wish that we had this down, but just be rubbish, be okay. Just keep going. Get a bit better as you're doing it. Learn a bit more. You know, I don't really mean produce the worst that you can produce. Of course, that's not what it means, but it means don't be so caught up in perfectionism. You don't go forward. And, and literally two weeks ago, uh, we got the news that it was in the top 10 podcasts on it, Apple in self-improvement. I am not kidding. There's no, there's not, I'm no pretense here. Like that's the first good news we've had. <laughs> 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 and well, that's not quite true, but it was like, that was the yes. first time 
that we actually were all applauding. It was like spontaneous, this is fantastic. And the next week, this is last week, it was in top five. So this is like, this is now just on the verge of becoming a real thing. And that would be, we would be at zero if we hadn't had the courage to be rubbish. The courage to start, the child to learn and so on. We just had Matthew McConaughey on. Uh, that was really funny he's experience. Fan, he's phenomenal. Uh, he, he turned up, he looked like a movie star. I mean, like, he turns up, he's got this American flag behind him, yep. gold sunglasses, looked, he, I mean, I, I could have picked him out of anywhere. Like, he's, you are a movie star. I don't something. look like a movie star. You look yeah. like a movie star. He's something. And it was, just, it was just so fun. Halfway through the meeting, we just said, don't do the podcast thing. And, the episode, and then right at the end, we asked him a question right at the hour mark that launches us into a second conversation, which was, that was the funnest part for me. I said, what, I said, what would you do? What is something essential you're underinvesting in? And for 10 seconds, he was silent. And I thought maybe it even frozen and he didn't move. And I thought, well, I'm not going to interrupt him if he's thinking because it could be good. And the answer he finally came back with after 10 seconds, which was a long time of pause, he said, being a leader. And that launches into a, you know, what became the episode. So uh, that's, yeah. that's the courage to be rubbish. You know, right? That's an example. And I know, and it's great because I feel like, and I, I, again, this, maybe I'm going on a limb here, but most of my female friends, what cripples them is that need for perfectionism. My wife, you know, I've said to her, hey, when you come back to this podcast, when you come back to it, I said, I didn't say the courage to be rubbish, but now I will. But mm -hmm. I'd say, you need to just come and breathe and have fun. Okay, it's not uh, 20th century broadcasting. Uh, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect. I mean, you know, if there's glitches, if you read, look, I, I botched your open. I read it the wrong way. And, you know, doesn't like, matter. Uh, yeah, right. I mean, it doesn't, like, I feel bad about it, but it's like, no. But, but, you know, I just said, Maria, like, you got to come in and just have fun, have a conversation with your friends and your celebrities and the yes. experts. People also, then there's days, Maria, just come in and tell us how you feel because people want to know. But the bottom line is, stop with trying to make this like show perfect and put all this pressure on you and the staff. Just come in and just, you know, and and have the courage to be rubbish. Yes, and and because here's the thing, especially for overachievers, for people that are sort of wired as perfectionists, they won't actually be rubbish. There'll be no. moments of rubbish, but you won't be because you have high standards inside. And so what you do when you're already a high standards person and you're always putting on the gas, is you actually make mistakes far larger, far more likely, and you also burn out faster, yeah. burn everyone else out faster. You add stress and fear and worry and all of that stuff that's not helpful gets you out of actually performing at an optimal level. And so it's to learn, look, what if we could do this differently? There's a, there's a movie, you'll know the name maybe, I can't remember it now, but it's um, Queen Latifah is the main actress in it. And it's about how she has a she 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 is has a diagnosis uh, that's uh, that, that you know bad diagnosis. She knows she's going to die, and so she she suddenly just goes, "Okay, I'm just going to live whatever life I've got left differently. I'm just going to do it." Mm -hmm. and there's this one beautiful line in the movie where she just says, "She's looking at the mirror. Things are working out so much better for her because she's in her element and she's just taking." educated risk she's not afraid of looking silly and so on and it's just working and she she just says when she's looking in the mirror she says next time we're just not going to be so afraid you know, next time we're just going to do this differently yeah. and as it turns out the diagnosis is wrong and she does get a second chance then at the rest of her life and i think that's kind of you know that's what we're talking about yeah. here it's not that the things that matter are different. We know what matters. Many of us do already know what's essential. If we don't, you focus on that, what's essential. But once you do, it's about how do we find the right way to go about this? Life is, doesn't have to be misery. It doesn't have to be drudgery. It doesn't have to be suffering. It, it, even in difficult times, you can live with a spirit of thankfulness yeah. and joy, enjoy the experience, go forward in that mode. And, and, and that's really... You know, that, that opens you up to smarter ways to work. We're, pro we're to approaching a funeral. You might be impressed by this, but I, you know, I'm continuing to look at this as a celebration of life and and I'm, I'm getting the family to shift and say, hey, you're going to see friends you haven't seen forever. This is going to be a bit of a reunion. You know, um, let's not, you know, even how I'm 
going to decorate and what I'm going to with the food, everything is going to be based around, you know, not a day of drudgery, not a day, you know, like what, why you, your mom would not want that, mm. you know, and um, this is a chance to salute and celebrate her. But then also I know from my father-in-law, a wonderful opportunity to connect again with people he hasn't seen forever that are going to, I know already some of them are saying to them, you're my brother Costa and I'm going to be with you no matter what. And you know, it's, it, it's so, but again, we could go into it and say, Hey, this is morbid. This is the end. This is. And so I, I, I think that anyway, by, by, by taking the, the lighter view even, right. It was just yes. Yeah. As I, I'm listen, I'm seeing in my life when I haven't applied your book, that's been heavy for me. And I'm thinking when I have how I've succeeded, um, can you, Greg? What about the done for the day list? Because I love this one. Yeah, let's let's. This is uh, so let's, let's wrap Kelsey needs to hear this one. I feel like it's Kelsey's perfect, day never ends. Done for the day list. One, it's a perfect one for us to be done for the day with. Yeah. Is uh, look just having a done for the day list. One of the things the pandemic I think stole from most of us was a sense of being done, and there weren't many boundaries before the pandemic. Mm -hmm. But even with the pandemic. It just removed those last few things. There was, there's no geographical separation between work and home. And so everything just flows. There's your to-do list is forever. And, and what Anna and I, my wife and I found is that if we weren't careful, well, the day ends at five or six or seven or eight or nine, it just, there's no end. And you just, you just, this is why people say that they, they find that they're not working at home, but they're living at work. It just never ends. And so we started saying, okay, could we make a list today for a done for the day list? When we are done with these things, we're actually done, right? Hands up, nobody gets hurt. We get to move into rituals that we've had to develop for relaxation. Lots of overachievers just actually don't know how to relax. It, it, so it's very uncomfortable for them. Mm -hmm. So they, as soon as they have white space on the calendar, as soon as they go, okay, I'm done, they're like, oh, well, I don't, I don't know what to do. Okay, I'll go back to work, that's more comfortable. And so it's actually building rituals in that, that a personalized that signature for you that you start to go, these are the things I love to do. These are rejuvenating for me. And so if you make a done for the day list, it helps you to solve problems through creativity and strategy rather than just more hours. You're just forcing function. Okay. Once this is done, I can't do That's anymore. That's it. And we're, oh yes. Yes. There's nothing else I can do. Yeah. yeah. So therefore, you're going to prioritize better. You're going to you're going to think about which things really are the stress factors that if I get them done today, I feel satisfied. Okay, that's good. We've got those important things done, and so it helps you plan better, and it also helps you create rhythms because your day ends. My day it's five o'clock. That's my that is my. I go out to my office. I I'm like a town crier. It's five o'clock. You know, it's yeah. five o one. Whatever the time is, I'm actually leaving. So there's an accountability. So I have a done for the day list at the beginning and a town crier at the end so that we don't go on. And my wife and I use now the term sneaky work for any work that we do after the five o'clock time. And that's either of us. Uh, you know, you do sneaky work over there. You know, you sit, you, you, someone's sitting in a bath or you sit in the hot tub and somebody's on their phone or they're on yeah, Amazon yeah. buying something. And you're like, no, this is sneaky work. No, none of this. Yeah, yeah. You actually need to be done. And, and what, are, like, you talk about the three elements of relaxing because relaxing is hard for people too. Because uh, I think we, I always say half commitment and half anything leads to misery. So I sometimes get in that state where I'm half watching TV or whatever, but then I'm half working. Because yeah. if I sit there and just do nothing, then I start getting guilty with that clutter in my brain. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that what you want, the ideal, is to be able to be wherever you are fully in that thing. Uh, maybe that's a bit unrealistic for some people. And if, for example, you have very young children, that's especially challenging um, because they, they tap you far more than any technology does. So I want to be sympathetic and, and not, not add guilt to people on this. But I do think that what you want, I mean, I like a little bit of television. I, I don't want to... I don't want to watch for hours and hours, but it's good for me to completely unlock with something comedic that just, mm -hmm. just relaxes. There's nothing that even looks like work for me. Uh, you know, people can choose the things that they choose, but you have to develop a little self-awareness for the things that, that 
that are rejuvenating for you. My wife and I, we made a list, each of us made a list of 20 things and we've had to keep working on them to get more and more precise. Anna brought me just yesterday, the day before, five things that are like more precise now. Like these are things I can do to rejuvenate and relax. And I read them and I was like, they're so good. They're really unique to her. They're the things she likes to do. Uh, and, 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 and these are the go-tos when she's building a nighttime ritual and she's figuring it instead of just, okay, well, you try and shut off work, work till the second before bed. And then you've got to suddenly shut it off. That's mm, not going to work. No. So, so yeah, done for the day list, uh, build relaxation rituals. Yeah. And, and I, like a slingshot, you can actually do better work the next day because you've actually had a, a time to recuperate time to relax the mind, relax the body, get healthy again to be able to go and hit you know, it again. Not morning. that you need any more ammunition, Greg, but on, uh, there's a, if you look, I think there's a great interview that uh, Joe Rogan does with an MMA fighter, and he actually breaks down by training less over a long period of time how that leads to far more success as an MMA fighter. And then he talks about even working out in the gym and how, and when he broke it all down logically, it was like, oh my goodness, he's so right. And how the work, 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 fight, 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 workout, 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 work. Out, work, out, work and and how the results started diminishing it's fascinating right. you may want to it, it basically just backs up everything you're selling um and i and i do love this and i'll let you go on this is like just you know be wherever you are in that one thing like you said steph curry was in that one thing i think lebron is afraid of what everyone thinks of him and i feel like shaq's mind was all over the place just because we talked about them mm. but steph curry's right there i feel like tom brady's like that too he's right there mm -hmm. he is right there uh, it, you know, we we were Marie and I were at the game that they were losing twenty eight to three at the Super Bowl, yep. and and everyone's giving up. A lot of our Boston friends were leaving. My wife said, "No, look at Tom Kevin. He was walking off the field and he was talking to one of his receivers calmly, explaining, okay, when we run the route, we're going to run it this way.' It wasn't the head down. It wasn't kicking over like a cooler. It was he was still in the." moment of like okay this is this is where how we're not scoring this is how we're going to yep. score and he goes no look at him kevin this is not over it's not over because him. right because he would but he stayed in that moment so i think it's like if you are sitting in a hot tub then just sit in the hot tub you know if you're watching tv then watch the tv you know for if you're just you know going to sit in nature with your feet in the grass and get grounded then just be there Yes. But but we all like the phone, the this, the that, the the multitasking, and yeah. So anyway, this uh, I love it, uh, uh, Greg. I'm um I'm just so grateful for this this interview. I think the work you're doing is incredibly important because I feel like more and more is coming, and it's so funny too. Where you said this about I'm hearing this now from workers. A friend of ours is a um works in the school system in, in administration. I think is an assistant superintendent. And she says now, because of the Zoom world, if she were to visit, she could visit three or four schools in a day. She would have to drive way across Connecticut. Then, okay, I get my three visits. Well, now, because of the work at home thing, she can visit 10 schools in a day. <laughs> but she will have to say to like her team, like, do you see my schedule? You don't, I don't even have a pee break here. Yeah. It's eight, it's nine, it's 10, 11, and 12, and da, 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 to six or seven at night. And it, it's, it's so the, the working at home where, yeah, the conveniences have come. It's like, you're right, the work doesn't stop. And, uh, and that's not helping any of us. The, the book, you guys, is uh, effortless. The uh, author is uh, Greg McCune. And um, you can find this book on Amazon. And I urge you to listen to the podcast. But Greg, what's the name of the podcast? What's Essential with Greg McEwen? And I'd love people to come subscribe, come join the journey. Please. And uh, and Greg, uh, I would love to have you back at some point. And um, you may even want Maria on your show because she, after the brain tumor, she sees everything differently. Yeah, we'd love, we'd love to, we'd love to have her. She's really changed her life and I'm really proud of her. So, uh, but yeah, the work you're doing, it's so important. So please keep it up, Greg. And, uh, and thank you. Thank you. Wow. So good. Kelsey, 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 Kelsey. Kevin, Kevin, Kevin. Mm. A lot of things to ponder over here. Yes. I have a lot of notes. Um, I was ha like half taking notes for the show and then half taking notes for myself. <laughs> yeah, because you're in that place of not. Yeah. And 
you're at the age where that's what we're taught. And by the way, I've promoted that to you guys. Mm -hmm. This is your time. You're young. You're strong. And I think a lot of that's true, but I also think that there are diminishing results. You have to find balance. Yeah. I'm... I'm literally the poster child for you have an hour to relax and I cannot relax. So I just no. keep working again. And you know, Maria's the same like, way. Yeah. Maria, never. Because it's and comforting. Can I, so I didn't say it on the air, but you know, my thing was always my huh. signal and she hated it. Huh. Probably still does. Uh, so she, <laughs> she's like, and I need you to, and I like lift up like bowl of cereal. Your cereal bowl, I know. Bowl of cereal. <laughs> and so as soon as that bowl of cereal came out, like I'm done. Well, I've called you a couple of times and <laughs> where you're like, <laughs> Um, or FaceTime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, tell Kelsey. Uh, yeah. I'm like, <laughs> the talk to you tomorrow, Kim. Well, you I know, for me, it, okay, can I tell you what my problem, one of my problems is I'm up all night. I sleep an hour, I'm up. I sleep an hour, I'm up. Then the dogs have me up between six and seven. Mm -hmm. And so while your generation and Maria too are sleeping, I'm working and we're, and I'm like, so I'm just like, hey, you know what? At eight or nine, I'm done. I've been up since six working I, I'm out. That's healthy though. Like, I, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. you know, and I think that that's why I encourage you to get up earlier yeah. because just get it done and be like, no, nope, done. 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 I'm checking out. Done. Because um, it is diminishing returns. And I think, you know, the term balance is the best possible term we can come up with to explain it. It's not quite accurate because right. there's no way you're going to balance. You're not, there's you're no not going to go to the Olympics with balance uh, right you know what i mean uh, it's probably like you, you're probably not yeah. gonna have a boyfriend or girlfriend maybe or unless you have that amazing boyfriend or girlfriend who's gonna right. be driving you to swim practice and right you know anyway balance is it yeah so but but i think if we say i want to be super successful in this one girl today who wants to be cancer if you can help them and yourself mm -hmm. understand that your chances can be better to be successful or to beat cancer by stopping yes by 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 um getting to an effortless state yeah All, like his first book just doing what's essential right um can you explain yeah. the done for the day list to me does is that like a f i didn't get i was gonna jump in but i was like i'll just ask kev because he seems to get it is that like a physical thing that he writes in the morning Sounds like so it. So it's just like a to-do list of like yeah, no. mandatories for the day. Yeah, that you know, and what's essential. Right. What has to get done today, right. and um, and right, because that makes sense. Because then if there's things it. that like you separate that are like okay, and then I'm out. This is today. This is stuff that can get done done tomorrow. And yeah. I'm out. And if you are yeah. trying during your day, and you're not FaceTiming with friends, you're mm -hmm. not texting, you're mm -hmm. not doing that stuff, like mm -hmm. you can work efficiently and get yeah. things done. I I worked one writing job I had it it I had a veteran uh, writer mentor who took me under his wing and he was always saying like you know I was like well I know I heard sitcoms like you work till five in the morning some nights and he said yeah on a poorly run show mm. he's like what ha he's so he would tell me about those shows he worked on that were like that yeah he's like, but people come in they wa they wander in at like 10 what was on TV last night? What sports? Go, and back then, I don't know if it's like that, but always there was tons and tons of free food menus, like, you know, back in those days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then you go make a bagel. Right. Then you flirt <laughs> with somebody. Right. Okay. Okay. Then it's like just about that time. You get up the crafty. And, and get a, some no, cheese next thing you know, it's lunch. Oh, right. You come yeah, in at yeah, 10. Yeah, yeah. It's one o'clock lunch. Yeah. yeah. And then boom, it's now one or two in the morning. Whereas... When he would go, he'd go in go at nine in his office, close the door, start typing, working, working efficiently. And he's like, and if it's a show's run that way and people work that way, no, mm -hmm. everyone's out at seven and we're home. Mm -hmm. We're with our families. Mm -hmm. So it is working smarter, not harder and working efficiently. But what he's saying is, and we keep hearing is take that as take the pause and ask that question. How can this be done? Right. Easier. Right. How can this be be in and, and, and why does this have to be miserable? Mm -hmm. How many times did I say it to you? Like you heard me the other day even with Maria. Like we were the three of us were talking and I said, mm -hmm. Maria, you know, the carny business that yeah, was miserable, but we I just was like, How do I make it fun? Right. Uh even right. when I had to do the renovations of the house, I'm literally sleeping on the floor under a a, a um 
I'm in a microwave in basically our garage and with the dogs all on top of me. And I'm like, you know what? I'm like, we're camping. Right. <laughs> That's how I treated it. <laughs> and I'm like, you know what? Like, um, and I don't have to get up and I was thinking all the cool things. I don't have to get up and wear something nice to work. Mm-hmm. I don't have to pr- I'm like, mm-hmm. I'm like in like, you know, painter's pants and totally. Yeah. And it's like, I don't have to shave. And I'm just like, yeah, yeah let's just, and, and anyway, and, um, I, I always kind of applied that. Yeah. And I think I've been at my best. And I think the, uh, my problem has been is the anger and all that other stuff that those toxic emotions that have cluttered my brain and worn me down. Yeah, that's and, crazy. Uh, you know. I mean, we all have it. Yeah, not you. But, uh, my, mine might you not don't. be anger. Mine might not be anger. No, you have your other scams. Stuff. Right. Yeah, no, no, right. no. Yeah. We all got our scams. Yeah, you have your, I guess you have your scams I got too. my scams. Trust me. Yeah. If I were perfect, then I would have a bowling ball on my no, stomach. No, no, no. I know that. I know that, honey. I think <laughs> no it's, one's uh, perfect. No, no, Except no. for Nefertiti. She's perfect? Yeah. That's like the goddess of like perfectionism or something. Oh. My mother used to make me call her Nef as a joke. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's how you I know that. You guys are hilarious. <laughs> um, yeah. No, I loved him. He was, was great. Really lots to, lots, lots and lots to process. Mm-hmm. Um, you guys, thank you so much for um yeah. tuning in winnie also is very grateful yeah, she um is. and yeah like i think uh let's all try to find ways to live more effortlessly amen i have to say i really liked that story he told at the beginning with the college student and the professor because i'm that way just so quick to be like okay let's do it and like how am i gonna figure this out and i'm gonna get all these people to do all this and all it really took was one other additional person in class recording it on his phone you remember that story like yes so great so great yeah i thought that was awesome i feel like i'm a life hack master you are so that didn't no, blow me away as no. much because i'm always like wait but how you do know we, i'm not a life hack master there's an easy way to do this, this what are we doing you tell me yeah. i'm like oh my yeah, god why are we do why are we killing no, ourselves no, like yeah. you know you are a life, life hack yeah master. and i think I'll, and um sometimes you know to you have to spend a little money or yeah. a little time to make those hacks. You show me that. But then they yeah. pay off. It's an investment. Yeah, there was, yeah. Like, like literally right now, Maria's taping something, mm-hmm. right, for the new fronts. Right. And um, because of what's going on in our lives right now, we had to do it from home. So they needed my computer. Mm-hmm. So they have my computer. Well, there's a desktop computer in the same place they're filming. Mm-hmm. So now, now I don't have that computer and I don't have my own computer. Right. Well... I, thank God, have my older backup okay. computer ah. that I have in my office. You know, it's a big, heavy oh, no, brick. Hold on. Oh, that was a horrible picture that it paused on. Oh, nice. <laughs> Carry on. <laughs> it was, it's a big, heavy brick, but it works. Mm. And this morning, I am sending out heavy-duty, time-sensitive stuff. And I don't have my computers, but there is my little old backup. Thank God you had it. And this is the stuff where Maria is just, she's down on me for, wait, why do you need this? I'm like, because I go 120 miles an hour, Maria. Yeah. yeah. And I want my bowl of cereal at night. <laughs> and I do want to accomplish a lot. Yeah. But I have to have the tools mm-hmm. to do it and mm-hmm. the easy ways to do things. And sometimes that's it. Yeah. Um, Listen here, for all the cars I'm accruing here, as you see my little collection, yeah, right? yeah I, I gotta drive one today all right but if you put them all together it could be one amazing car but, but uh, instead right I, I get all these used ones and why today i'm at a very important meeting with costas maria is in the middle of a live shoot hasn't eaten all day the poor thing right and you're like kev i i it, i want someone who a caretaker here who is taking care of lita i said stay with us on a paid vacation yeah and use the one of the cars yeah. and go on your little adventure and because yeah. and, she's hurt too from yeah. our loss. She's yeah. devastated. I'm like, yeah. no, no, no. Do not run go back to LA. Yeah. Go be in nature. Go have fun. Yeah. So guess what happens? Kelsey calls me and goes, I don't have Kevin, I gotta Queenie's get starving. I gotta get Queenie food. <laughs> yeah. You know, she's sick and you know, she's like exhausted. Yeah. And and I said, Oh, well, we have the golden banana. And I looked bad ass yeah, so yeah uh, this like used for thunderbird Me that i bought that maria's like why do we need that we have the prius we have the, the we mini van. yeah but you're right because yeah. why because your girl wasn't about to bike down to dng yeah no but hard. and again that's another thing you know the, the that's another thing the, what? that bike has two not flat tires no. but low in air i'm really upset but i'm down it. on myself no because i have the pump oh. out in the pavilion and every time i say 
This is a two-minute task. I need to just fill these up because I'm going to need it. And I'm doing you know, after the show what I'm doing. You're going to do that. Well, yeah, if we yeah. don't have vampires here, we might have vampires. If we don't have <laughs> vampires here, then I have to sneak by because we have a lot of company coming in the house and I'm just blown out and exhausted. Yeah, I need to fill those. Why? Because so I can you, yes. you, well, you taught me that any task that takes less than two minutes, just do it right then get it or done. else you're not going to get it done. Move on. Yeah. Does it clutter your brain? Yeah. But then you can keep momentum. Yes, we like momentum. You know, I think, but the key is where maybe I failed is where I freed up that time, I just bring in more stuff. I've told you that before. And that's where, that's what I'm like, I want to, yeah. I want to work on, you know. That's why I told Kev, I said, listen, Kev, I know that you like to continue to just move and move and move and go and go and go because it keeps your mind uh, busy. But let's take maybe a little. No, break. and then I have guilt too because I, 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 people need my help, and I promise to help, and then I like get so OCD if I can't but do it. But listen to all these other people's advice, you know. Yeah. One week isn't gonna hurt you. Poor Kev sitting there like, mm, uh huh. <laughs> like, oh, do you, do you ever notice when I'm interviewing that? I, all the time. Are this, you kidding me? Yeah. This I know. thing is that so the mic has. Well, I this, do it too. If you're in audio, you can't see, but if you're video. This thing just becomes the most amazing it's thing incredible. to rest my exhausted chin. Well, that's what I'm saying. So that's I can what I'm keep saying. Going, you know? I'm like, no, you need no. And I think every single one of our heel squad, well, ben, they've already ben, voiced it. Ben, don't break. Yeah, you're about to break. Yeah, no, never. That's the problem. <laughs> the problem is, is I don't break. So that's why they just keep pouring more on my plate. Well, I I'm, I'm your bodyguard, so that's I why I'm in you your life. I needed you the other day, Kelsey. You did? What happened? For that very reason. Uh-oh. But that's a regular Guy Friday th oh, discussion. okay. We're already very way, making this way too much about me. <laughs> okay, you guys. So, Kelsey, until then, what? Until then, you guys, pet your puppies. Yes. Be nice people. Make good choices. And be present. Boom. Bye, everyone.